Hello everybody, welcome to the tutorial where I will show you how to make Bloody Relic show custom cars. So let's go to editors and mods and let's go to the car editor. Now first thing you will see here is that you can open the modding guide and I actually suggest you to try that. If you click the modding guide you will find uh, this document here which describes how to how to do a lot of things and uh, I really suggest you to read this. Uh, the other thing you can do is click on download cars and it will show you all the cars that people have created so you can subscribe to them on Steam and there are quite a lot of them actually and some of them look really nice. So now how to make your own car. Uh, first click the new car and as you do that you will have a choice to select uh, like your base car from. So I suggest to pick the one that you know in the game that drives similarly to what you want to have and for example let's pick this uh, drop top now name it the way you want. And the first thing uh, you would probably want to do is to save the car. And after you save the car, you can then uh, start editing it. Yeah, you can then start uh, editing the sprites. So yeah, let's begin. Let's begin with sprites. When you click this, edit sprites, it opens this folder with all the sprites that are in the game. Um, all these sprites that are in the game are here and uh, let's open them in a graphic uh, graphics editor where's my car there it is all right so i'm just going to control click all these and drag them somewhere here. Okay, so let's go through these wheels. There is the front and right wheel. I think you don't need to change that. Lines have to be changed when you change the shape. Uh, basically, you might want to put all the layers in one in one uh, in one file and edit them then separate them again. So I'll, do, I'll just do something simple in order to um, in order to show you how you can change the visuals of the game of the car. So let me add a couple of spikes here. So there's one spike. Uh, the car will be looking a little bit more um, evil this way. <laughs> right, so we add these two spikes. Now let's copy them. And let's copy them over to our lines. So in the lines, we would want to take a thin black brush. And I'm no artist, but I'll just I'll just try to draw the lines here. And let's add a new layer real quick. Right, I added a new layer. Now let me draw black thin lines here. I'm just I'm not an artist, I repeat that. So I'll just I'll just do this. And then I will remove these triangles. And I have these lines here, right. So uh, if we go back here and copy these triangles I've just added again and put it on the paint mask, we can keep them here because they are just white and the paint uh, will be applied on these. Then in the window mask we shouldn't touch anything because the window mask is used for telling the game where the window is. Okay, what else do we have here? Base. 
let's keep it like this interior doesn't change in this case and we should also add this on the preview so i'm going to paste here and i'm going to copy the ugly lines that i had drawn here and paste it on the preview as well okay so we did the, a bunch of changes let's save all the files so let me see save flattened save flattened okay, mask save flattened lines save flattened so I, i've i've done these changes and saved things now if we go back to the game and hit reload sprites now you see that the car has some new stuff uh, on top. Yeah, so there's this, uh, these spikes and they are colored. Now we can probably do the test drive and uh, we get another paint job, but it will appear on the car correctly. All right, so that's how you change the visuals of the car. Now, when you change the visual, sometimes the parts will probably need to change as well because there is this parts position and there are the front lights. So we have to arrange it so that these uh, green bubbles are where the lamps are roughly. So same with the rear lights. Uh, rear, rear lights width and position should sort of be, those green bubbles should be on the lamps. Then there's the front axle width. You can show the wheels as much as you want or maybe make them narrow. You can actually make a motorcycle probably if you put the wheels in one spot. I haven't tried that though. Uh, front axle position just makes the wheels go up and down. Rear axle, you can make the wheels pop out and move them. But they should, they should be where they are supposed to be actually. So they will look good and they will work properly. Interior offset can uh, be used to move your modified modified version of the interior to match it so it will look nice in the game. And then there's this collider width. It should match the shape generally, but uh, it's better to leave more um, uncovered than, for example, if you make a change like that, I wouldn't do this because then it would be very unnatural because your, your car would hit a wall and there would be white, like nothingness in here. So make make the shape match the car as close as possible, but you can allow things to go out of this shape. And then there's the center of mass. I really suggest to keep it somewhere near the rear wheels, slightly above the rear wheels. You can move it up and down, uh, but it will change the car handling quite a bunch. You can just go to test drive and feel it for yourself. What else do we have here? Uh, we have the exhaust count. So as you, if you look closely, you can see that there's a smoke coming from this point and you can actually move this point where the smoke is coming from. And you can click here to make uh, mirrored double exhausts there's a bug here because yeah now when I moved exhaust position the bug was fixed automatically I'll have to fix it sometime yeah so you can you can like select where where your exhaust will be uh, to show the smoke so don't don't forget to save the car from time to time now as we handle the visuals and part positions let's go to parameters uh, first thing we see in parameters is the speed index. It is automatically calculated from our uh, mass and engine power. So for example, if we test drive the car right now, you can see that it's pretty slow. I don't know. Let's make it much faster. So let's go. Uh, and there are two ways to make the car much faster. One is to reduce the mass, but then the car will be very light and bumpy. And this is also already a light car, so only 100, uh, 1,420 kilograms. So maybe let's leave the mass 
and increase the engine power instead. So right now it's 390 horsepower and if we make it like 500 horsepower it it is going to be noticeably faster. Much faster and also much harder to handle. So you have to find uh, the right values to make the car uh, manageable. Okay, so let's let's go through all the parameters here. Uh, max speed is not the uh, it, it will not change the speed of the car. Like if you if you put it all the way up to 400 and go to test drive, the car will not go on 400. It will go as fast as the mass and engine power allows. So you should have to probably test it and you can see right now the car is stuck in fourth gear and it cannot shift to the fifth gear and this is why the, the, this is a gimmick where like this max speed has to actually match the real speed of the car so you have to try to find it you have to find the real speed of the car and as you change car mass engine power or, or something like that uh, you have to adjust the max speed to, to be what it actually is. So let's find the max speed. Right now we have added some engine power and we can see right now car is topping out in sixth gear at 269. So let's make the uh, uh, let's make this max speed at 280 and let's try it again. Yeah, it's still uh, 200, uh, okay, 271, so that's the actual top speed of the car. So as, as we change any uh, parameters that affect the speed, we have to readjust this in order for the car gearbox to work correctly. So now you can see with 271, it should probably show the actual top speed. Yeah, 270, 271, it's flapping on and off, but that's okay. So yeah, this is the, the correct top speed. And make sure that uh, you're using the same units of measurement, like uh, it's kilometers per hour here. So if you are in miles per hour, you probably want to switch in the settings to kilometers per hour uh, to find the right speed. Okay then, car mass. If you increase the mass, the car will be slower unless you increase the engine power together. So. Now I increase the mass and the car almost, almost doesn't move because the engine is way too weak for the car right now. So we have to compensate for it. Let's go and increase the engine power. And now the car goes faster, but now it's, it's heavy, so it will still have a lot of inertia and it's going to be hard to handle. Yeah, so, so light cars turn easier than uh, than heavy cars but there are some parameters for this so there's this handling parameter so if we move it up all the way now the heavy car should handle a little bit easier yeah it, it turns a little bit easier now okay so one more tip always change just one parameter at a time because otherwise you will not know what what happened like if you change the mass and the engine power and uh, the handling all at once you will start uh, seeing that the car is undrivable but you will not know which which change exactly made it undrivable so always change just one parameter at at a time and if in doubt always check the speed index here and try to keep the speed index b below 1000 because if if you make it higher than 1000, you won't even be able to save the car because uh, the car is too fast and it cannot be used in the game if it's faster one, than 1000 on speed index. So let's try to bring things back. I think it was 1400. Uh, Engine power was around 500. And uh, handling was somewhere here. So let's try to save the car. It saves well. Uh, I think we, since we changed things, we have to redo the top speed. Right now the top speed, okay, it's 270, so we can keep it. Uh, it says 271, it doesn't have to match exactly, but it has to be very close, so we will keep this. 
Uh, now, uh, let's see, max health. This is how much damage your car can take. So if you put it to 500 and you drive into a wall, you can see you, you received 15 damage and there's this health bar here on top, right? And it barely got red. And so if you want to make a tank, you would probably want to make max health very high and if you want to make a motorcycle you will make max health very low so now if you hit the wall uh, it's like 30 percent of your damage right away so let's put it back to something like 199 and let's go with other settings so we have uh, seen what max speed does it's very important to set it correctly we have seen what car mass does, max health, engine power. Now this max RPM, this is, and also idle RPM, these two values here, they do not change the sound. You have to notice that they do not change the sound. They only change uh, the looks of this bar here. So they don't do much. They just show different values of RPM. And if you want to change the sound, to match the to match the engine settings you have to go to sounds and you have to select the sound that matches closely what you actually want to hear so it's, it works like that you can also change the turbo sound uh, supercharger sound and the muffler plug in here uh, so let's get back to parameters okay max rpm and idle rpm are covered now handling handling we, we already showed that if your car is heavy, you need to give it more handling. If it's light, you need to give less handling or it will be uh, like difficult to, to control. But you can just do test drive and tweak the value until you find it uh, in the setting that you actually enjoy. So let's go back to parameters. Grip. Now, I really suggest not touch these two values here. I'm not going to touch them either because Frankly, I don't even remember <laughs> how they will affect the handling, but they are very finely tuned and and uh, change them at, the, at your own risk. Now, this sideways traction max velocity is uh, a way to make the car very grippy. So if you want to make a Formula One car, you want to bring this all the way up. And if you test drive right now, you will see that the car will not drift. It will, it will be sticky and it will grip the road very very well so you can you can make a car which goes fast around the corners this way without going into a drift and on the opposite if this is very low the car will just be like on ice all the time slightest slightest turn will make it uh, will make it drift on here so yeah, so uh, I'm in the game, most cars are keeping this uh, value quite low at two or, or three or four. And you can upgrade this with grip upgrades and so on. But if you make it too high, even like, I don't know, nine or something like that, it's going to be a little bit too grippy for my taste in this game. It's already like nine is already super grippy and uh, and you can like never go into a drift and just go around the corner so so it's nice to keep this value somewhere in the two three zone or even less it says recommended values between one and 1.5 so you can you can like you can use that and it will work uh, shift time for the gearbox is how fast the gear changes if you make it high the gear changes will take a little longer and if you make it uh, low, the gear changes will be much faster, but uh, it doesn't affect anything much. So you can just keep it where it was. What else? All right, so we have covered the whole thing. The most important part here is that if you change mass or engine power, you have to readjust the max speed. You have to go in a straight line and find the real max speed. And also don't forget to save the car from time to time. All right, so description. It's just uh, your name and some uh, description for the car, nothing important. Part positions, we already covered that. 
sounds, we already covered that. This is main, main thing is the engine sound that you might want to change. Uh, modding guide, we already showed that it opens uh, this document. And actually in this document, it's useful uh, to find the additional resources section and you can use these images. You can download these images and use them to build your own car interiors, for example. This is for the window glass uh, and so on. So yeah, it's, it's a useful thing. Then when you create your model, you can share it on the Steam Workshop. So yeah, it asks to save the car first. You can share it on the Steam Workshop uh, and you should only share it if you have modified the sprites because if you, you if you just change the parameters, it's not okay because uh, then the, uh, it would be a bit too boring to have the cars that look the same with just slight parameter changes. So you can uh, play the car that you have changed the, the parameters locally, but please don't share it on Steam unless you really change the locks. Right, so let's try what, what it does. It, uh, when we click OK, it uploads the car to the workshop and after it's done, it will open up the page uh, in your web browser and you will see that here you go, there's the car and other people will be able to subscribe to it. And actually there are much more cars in the workshop. Let me delete this one, I don't want to keep it. Uh, there are more cars in the workshop and you can find them. You can find them if you close the car. Here it is the download cars button. If you click it, you'll get uh, a lot of community cars and you can click uh, subscribe to any of them to get it in your game and, and to play with it later. So let's open the car that we created here, my drop top. And uh, what else? Reload sprites, I already covered this. When you edit sprites, you have to later reload them. So they, they, will, uh, they will read the sprites from the file system and refresh them. Test drive, we just used it a lot of times to start the test drive. And actually that's it. Now let me quickly show you how you can play with your car um, how you can play with your car in the game. So there are two ways. One is to start a campaign. Uh, if you start a new campaign and select custom tracks and cars to on, you can also do workshop tracks and cars to on if you want to include the workshop cars that you downloaded. And let's randomize a name. Now, if we start a campaign, you will get that car to appear. Um, I will skip this real quick. You will get the car to appear in your garage here. So uh, you cannot buy it up front unless it's very slow. But if we go to the back here, there's my drop top. It requires level 29 because we made it pretty fast. So it's faster than the fastest car in the game, which requires level 27 and it's locked until you reach the level. And it also, the price is also automatically generated uh, from the speed. Right, so let's go back. There's other way to play with your car. It's the custom race. And uh, if you start a new session, you will get, uh, you will get your car somewhere here. Since it's fast, we will find it maybe in the end. And there, these cars are from the Steam Workshop. Uh, so there's your, your car we just created. So we can select it and then we can add other players with the same car. And there's one thing to note. The car might be locked. If you haven't reached a high level in the campaign, the car might be locked. So there is a cheat to unlock it. You can click F2 to give the console, to get to the console. And then there is a cheat called cheat unlock cars on. If you do that, you will get this warning here. Uh, but if you click OK, you will then be able to change into any car regardless of your 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 level. But it will not uh, work with the leaderboards un until you restart the game. So yeah, that's it.
that's it and i hope you enjoyed bloody rally show and thank you for watching also please remember that bloody rally show has a uh, free version called bloody rally show prologue and you can create custom cars there as well so i will add all the links in the description including the command to unlock the custom cars to test them in uh, the custom race so thank you for watching and See you in the leaderboards.